All right, here at Greenbrier West with Jared Robertson, the head basketball coach. Uh, Jared, first of all, it's football season. You, <laughs> were you able to get anything in this summer, uh, given uh, the COVID and everything, uh, during the summer window for basketball? Well, when we started in June with phase one and phase two, the conditioning period, uh, we had a lot of football kids out here working out. Some of our basketball kids are football players, so I had our other basketball kids come out here too. We had a great participation through June, and then we got into July and we started phase three, and we had a couple great days in the gym working out, uh, doing a lot of shooting drills. We got to shoot the ball better this year, and we were we were really having a great start to the three week period considering we couldn't play. And then everything went to, you had to wear a mask inside and all that. So we kind of shut it down then other than some conditioning stuff. But um, it's disappointing because I really think the, the secret to our success the last two or three years was our kids worked hard in the summer. We got a lot of, you know, no pressure games in different places. We always traveled around this, the state in the summer and we missed that this summer and that's something when basketball season gets here our kids are going to have to make up for that i want to get this kind of out of the way up front and see if you might leave if i ask you about it but last <laughs> season when you lost when you lost in the sectional lost to mount view i know that had to be a tough loss you guys were 18 and 4 do you think that that will spur you any at all the fact that you lost in the sectional well you were probably one of the better teams in the region well, you know, it's, it's one of those things that our region was deep, just like it was the year before. You know, we knew Mount View was a talented team. When they came in here, they're so athletic, and it's, you know, when they're pressuring you, it's hard for us to simulate that, that kind of pressure in practice. And, and really looking at the film, I really felt like we played pretty well. We just shot the ball so bad, you know, and part of that is their athleticism makes your shots harder to make. Um, our kids are really disappointed. And only losing one senior, even though he was a great senior and, and we'll dearly miss him, we've got so much back. I think our kids are excited for this season. You know, we're going to have a deep region again. It's it's changed a little bit. We lost Charleston Catholic, but you know, James Monroe was a really young team that brings everybody back, and they're back in our region. Webster County is going to be tough. Greater Beckley will be tough. You know, we got rivals around here with Meta Bridge and Richwood. It's just – it's going to be a lot of uh, tough games for us, but you know our kids are excited, and I think we have a chance to be successful. Do you guys are staying in single A? Uh, there's a four, um, there's the four class system this year. Do you in favor of that? Do you like the four class system, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think there's a lot of positives to it, um, and I do understand. I think there's some negatives that go with it as well. I think that our state has has explored trying to find some possibilities of making that competitive balance that the SSAC has talked about across the board. And I think it's, you know, it's kind of a compromise. It's a two year trial period in a way. And I'm excited to see how it goes. Um, you know, I'm, you know how it is, the basketball coaches go to the state tournament every year and now it adds another day. So that's a positive for me right off the bat. But um, I think it'll be interesting to see when you look, there's some schools that you maybe scratch your head and think they don't make sense in their class, but there's a lot of them that it does make sense. So I think it's going to be exciting to see how it works out for our state. Well, you being an athletic director here too, does that, uh, does it give you a little bit more insight as to, you know, why the SSCC is doing this and, and how it came about and just talking to other ADs about this whole thing? Because you're dealing with all sports, um, you know, when, you, when you're doing your job as athletic director. Well, I was, I was actually put on the committee as athletic director that the SSCC formed. I guess it's been over a year now when they were looking at different options and we met several times and talked about what other states are doing and, and how they're trying to accomplish the same thing. And People kind of think this is a unique problem to West Virginia, but when you start looking, a lot of states have faced this and, you know, you get into the private school thing, you get into you know, West Virginia is unique because we have schools with 100 kids all the way to almost 2,000. And it's tough. And when you start looking at all the options, there's no easy answer. I think they were trying to accuse the SSAC of just trying to, to fix things or something. And I don't think that's it. I think they're really just trying to find, is there a better system that we can go to? And if not, then I'd say we'll go back to how we've done it for years. Being the AD too, that gives you a little different mindset on it, as opposed to guys who are just coaching. It does. And, you know, we're kind of unique here. For several years, we were the smallest double-A or close to the smallest double-A. We dropped down. We were one of the biggest single A's. And, 
you know, it's helped us competitively being in single A as compared to double A. You know, a school like us trying to play the, the blue fields and the bridge ports and the schools like that is tough. But, you know, when you sit back as an AD and you look at the teams that you're playing, um, sometimes it's difficult because you, you want your team to be able to win games, you want to be successful, but you also want challenge for the postseason. And I think our coaches here, we've done a pretty good job with our scheduling of trying to accomplish that. Now, you talk, you mentioned all coaches go to the state tournament anyway. There was no state tournament last year. It was shut down <laughs> in the middle of the girls' tournament last year. Right. Uh, you guys have been to the state tournament the year before as a participant for the first time in years. Uh, did it help maybe the fact that you lost? Well, they shut it down and we weren't going to go anyway. So that, <laughs> I mean, was there any – I know, you, I know you wanted to be in the right. state tournament with all the other coaches, but it's got to be a little more fun as a participating coach as opposed yeah. to just going for the meetings and stuff. Yeah, it was it was a unique experience getting a coach on that floor. You know, I played in in the state tournament right. many were, many years ago, back in the dark ages. But to get the chance to coach there and having that opportunity and and getting there and feeling like we should have won the game that we lost. Um, it kind of drives me because I know how excited winning a state championship was for me when I was a player. Well, you're one of the few people you would remember being at right. play, and, and then, well, you're the only one that coached in it, unless any of your teammates were, were assistants. But uh, having both experiences, how was that different? Was it any different, or did you get some of the same feeling? I think you get the same butterflies. You walk out on that floor and you look around, and thousands of people there. You know, it's not. We have nice crowds here at home, but it's not like the being in the Civic Center playing down there. But, I, you know, for me as a coach, I just want to be able to win a state championship for our kids. You know, you know I think of my high school coach, Coach Estep, that passed away several years ago. He's like a, an uncle to me. He was so close to me. And, you know, I know what he did for me as a kid, and I just want to have our, our kids have that opportunity. And, yeah. and they did get that. Uh, you lost. You mentioned Chase Boggs. I mean, the one senior that you lost. Or Chase Hagee. Chase Hagee was yes. the senior that you lost. You guys had a lot of chases last year. Yeah. And over Chase, the years. We had three chases starting some games. It made it difficult on the coach. We had to say what run I was three, calling everybody. Run the three chase <laughs> offense. <Yeah. laughs> three chases out. Yeah. But uh, it's, we, you know, it was fun. And, and our kids now, even the kids now that weren't playing then were on our JV and they know what the experience was and the excitement it brought our school. And, and it is a driving force for our kids to want to get back down there. You lost Chase Hay, the one senior that you did lose. You bring, just talk about the personnel you got back and what you're expecting this year. Who are the starters back? And well, Caden Pack is our leading scorer that returns. Uh, he plays the point a lot. We get him off the ball some. We've tried to adjust our offense. Um, I'd say in a way we don't have a true point guard and it's kind of been an adjustment for me as a coach. Uh, he just does a little bit of everything for us. Chase Boggs is probably the surprise of our season last year. He was a kid that was our JV point guard the year before, and last year just came out and shot the ball well and played hard. He worked really hard in the offseason, got faster and quicker, and it really helped his game. And then we've got Lawson Vaughn. Uh, Coach Vaughn, my assistant, his son is our, our returning post player. He's our leading rebounder, uh, just a kid that works so hard. Um, he's a little undersized. He's up to about 6'3 now, which gives him a little bit more of a competitive competition inside when we play some big teams. But those are the three that came back that started all year long. And then we've mixed some other guys in, uh, Chase McClung, Gabe Medlin, uh, Evan McDade, Gage McClung. We've got four other kids that have a ton of varsity experience back. So we're returning seven kids that played a lot. And we got a two or three freshmen that played last year. It was our – main JV guys that I think is going to really give us depth. I really think we're going to have 10 guys that can play this year. And, you know, we started pressing last year, and um, our kids call it Greenbrier Press, <laughs> bumming <laughs> off the West Virginia University name, but uh, they just bought into it. And we, I think we play an exciting brand of basketball now. We press and run and, and just try and get after it, and our kids love it. Are you okay with them bumming off Because I know, I know what kind of fan, I know who your, who your fans are. The VT blind. here. <laughs> Uh, Are you, you know, all right with it? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I, I get a lot of comments about the Virginia Tech uh, stuff around here. You know how sure. that is. But, you know, I, I just like our kids having excitement. And, and I think with all this that's happened in the spring and summer, you know, good Lord willing, we get to have football season and all our sports this fall. And, 
and hopefully the winter sports are good to go this winter because I know our kids are excited to get back in the gym. Do you feel like Greenbrier West is starting to do morph into a little bit of a basketball school? You know as well as I do, it's <laughs> football down here, and you are an assistant football coach as well. Right. But uh, you feel like basketball started to come on a little bit? I mean, you won one state championship years ago, but over the last you know a couple of decades, it's kind of been football. Well, it is. You know, we have a great football program here. Um, but I, I'm going to say as an AD looking across the board, you know, our basketball has had several solid seasons in a row. Not, you know, I'm not saying necessarily state champion contenders, but we've been solid several years in a row. And you know, everybody knows our wrestling program is, is a high quality program. Our baseball program is, you know, 500 or better about every season the last several years. And then you go to the girls side and you look at our softball team and our volleyball team that's both been in state tournaments recently. And we've really had a great run of athletics here at Greenbrier West. And, you know, we've got another great senior class here and a lot of good young kids too. So hopefully that's going to continue across the board. But, you know, I can't – if somebody sees this, I'm not going to say we're a basketball school. That would get me in trouble. <laughs> well, Jared, I, I do appreciate you. have been a good friend over the years, and I appreciate your time this morning. It's great to see you out here. Appreciate it.